crown was used by Archbishop of Canterbury at actual moment of coronation monarch swapped crown for lighter imperial state crown before leaving Abbey. This is the crown that appears in opening sequence of Netflix drama The Crown The Queen shares her memories of her coronation day on new BBC programme. Sixty-five years ago, it was placed on the head of a 27-year-old Princess Elizabeth, signalling the moment she became Queen. Now, for the first time since her coronation in 1953, Her Majesty has been reunited with the glittering, but little seen, St. Edward's crown. Although many associate the British monarch with the imperial state crown, normally sported at the state opening of Parliament, the St. Edward's crown is used by the Archbishop of Canterbury at the actual moment of coronation. Made for Charles II in 1661 by the crown jeweller, Robert Viner, it was a replacement for the original, medieval crown which had been melted down in 1649 by the parliamentarians and was thought to date back to the 11th century royal saint. Edward the Confessor, the last Anglo-Saxon King of England. Scroll down for video composed of a solid gold frame, set with tourmalines, white and yellow topazes, rubies, amethysts, sapphires, garnet, peridot, zircons, spinel, and aquamarines, mounted in enameled gold collets, it also has a velvet cap with an ermine band. Our present Queen's coronation, which took place at Westminster Abbey on June 2, 1953 after 16 months of planning, was watched by millions throughout the world for the first time on television. At the moment the Archbishop of Canterbury placed the St. Edward's crown on the young sovereign's head, a fanfare was played by the state trumpeters, triggering a gun salute from the Tower of London and a peal of the Abbey Bells. Despite being the nation's longest reigning monarch, the Queen, who will celebrate her 92nd birthday in April, has never worn the St. Edward's crown again. Indeed, aside from a brief glimpse behind glass when she opened the Jewel House at the Tower of London in 1994, she hasn't even seen it in the flesh. St. Edward's vs. the Imperial State Crown Street Edward's crown is the crown that the Archbishop of Canterbury used at the actual moment of coronation in 1953. However, Queen Elizabeth then exchanged the crown for the Imperial State Crown, which is much lighter, before leaving Westminster Abbey. This crown, which is worn at the state opening of Parliament, is also believed to feature in the opening credits of Netflix drama The Crown. In series one of the show, actress Claire Foy, who plays the Queen, is seen trying on St. Edward's crown ahead of her coronation ceremony. But Queen and Crown have now been reunited again for a stunning new collaboration between BBC One and the Royal Collection Trust, the charity responsible for one of the largest and most important art collections in the world.
entitled The Coronation, the hour-long film, will reveal the story behind the crown jewels, which consists of 140 items and 23,000 precious stones, and the ceremony in which they are used. For the first time, the Queen will also personally share memories of the ceremony, as well as that of her father King George Virgin Islands U.S. in 1937. Viewing both private and official film footage, she recalls the day when the weight of both St. Edward's crown, and the hopes and expectations of a country recovering from war, were placed on her shoulders, saying, I've seen one coronation, and been the recipient in the other, which is pretty remarkable. The film, which is part of a series of programs across BBC television and radio revealing the treasures of the Royal Collection, also features eyewitness accounts of those who participated in the 1953 coronation including a maid of honour who nearly fainted in the abbey, and a 12-year-old choir boy who was left to sing solo when his overwhelmed colleagues lost their voices. Charlotte Moore, BBC Director of Content said, It is a real honour to have Her Majesty the Queen revealing her intimate knowledge of the crown jewels and fond childhood memories from when her father was crowned King George Virgin Islands U.S. in this very special film for BBC One. In her own words, the Queen will bring to life the enduring symbolic importance of the coronation ceremonies for modern audiences to enjoy. Other programs in the BBC Royal Collection season included Art, Passion and Power, The Story of the Royal Collection and Charles I's Treasures Reunited, as well as a radio broadcast revealing the captivating stories behind specific works of art in the Royal Collection through documentary material from the heavily guarded Royal Archives. The coronation will be screened on BBC One on January 14 at 8 p.m. The History of St. Edward's Crown Named after Edward the Confessor, St. Edward's Crown has been used to crown British monarchs at their coronation since the 13th century. But in 1533 it was also used to crown the controversial second wife of Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, unprecedented for a queen consort. The original crown was a holy relic kept at Westminster Abbey, Edward's burial place, until it was melted down by parliamentarians in 1649 during the English Civil War. The present version of St. Edward's crown was made for Charles II in 1661. It was fashioned to closely resemble the medieval crown, with a heavy gold base and clusters of semi-precious stones, but the archers are very much Baroque. The crown is solid gold, 12 inches tall and still weighs nearly 5 pounds despite having been made lighter for the coronation of George V. It is decorated with 444 precious and semi-precious stones including tourmalines, white and yellow topazes, rubies, amethysts, sapphires, garnet, peridot, zircons, spinel, and aquamarines. The 
band of the crown is bordered by rows of gold beads and mounted with 16 clusters, each set with a rectangular or octagonal step-cut stone decorated in enamel with model de canvas leaves, surrounded by rose-cut topazes and aquamarines. Its two archers are mounted with gold beads and stones. The mon, the orb near the top of the object, and which was replaced in 1685, supports a cross patty, with drop-shaped beads and diamonds. In 1671, one Thomas Blood briefly stole the crown from the Tower of London, flattening it with a mallet in an attempt to conceal it. After the coronation of William III in 1689, monarchs chose to be crowned with a lighter, bespoke coronation crown or their state crown, while the heavy and unwieldy St. Edward's crown usually rested on the high altar. Edward VII intended to revive the tradition of using St. Edward's crown in 1902 but on coronation day he was still recovering from an operation for appendicitis, and instead he wore the lighter imperial state crown. It was George V, therefore, who became the first monarch to be crowned with St. Edward's crown in over 200 years. Only six monarchs have been crowned using St. Edward's crown, Charles II, 1661, James II, 1685, William III, 1689, George V, 1911, 1937, and Elizabeth II, 1953. Until the early 20th century the stones adorning the crown were, remarkably, hired for the occasion of the coronation and then returned. It was only in 1911 that George V ensured the crown was permanently set with its semi-precious stones. In 1953 Queen Elizabeth II adopted a stylized image of the crown for use in coats of arms, badges, logos and other insignia throughout the Commonwealth realms to symbolize her royal authority. St. Edward's crown is currently on public display in the Jewel House at the Tower of London. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment your opinion, share this video and subscribe to my channel. New videos are uploaded every day.